We are continuing to compare the building of the report you see on the screen in both Microsoft's Management Reporter and Jet Reports, a Microsoft Excel add-on. In Management Reporter, reports are built using rows, columns, and trees. In this video, we'll be focusing on the building of columns. If you are an FRX user, you'll be able to follow along applying FRX to the comparison as Management Reporter and FRX use similar concepts. We'll be using the same GP database on the same machine at the same time for this comparison. In the previous video, we built the row component in Management Reporter and performed similar row type steps in Jet Reports. In the report we would like to build, there are five columns an account column, account description, year-to-date for company A called Fabricam, year-to-date for company B called Gabricam, and a column that adds or consolidates both companies into one total. Year-to-date will always be based on the reporting date for the report. So let's begin. On the right side of the screen is Management Reporter. On the left side, Excel with Jet Reports installed. Because Jet Reports does not use a column component, reports are built as a whole, we'll simply edit the columns created from the row comparison video in Jet. Let's create the column definition in Management Reporter first. As you can see, I'm already in the column definition window. I'll click on New to begin building the column component. Columns are defined below the line and the column headers are created above the line. The first column is the account number, so I'll double click on the column type and select the account codes or ACCT. When the column is matched with the row definition, the account number for each row will appear in the first column. In column B, we want to see the account name, so I'll double click in the column type and select row definition or DESC. When we created the row definition, the account description automatically populated next to the account number, making the account description the row description. The next column is the year-to-date balance for our first company, Fabricam. In the column type, I'll select Amounts from Financial Dimensions, or FD. I'll leave Actual as the book code. I'll also leave Base as the fiscal year and the period. Base is the reporting date and is defined at the time the report is calculated. Since I want this column to display year-to-date amounts, I'll change the period's covered field from periodic to year-to-date. Since this column will be for the Fabricam company, I'll enter the company name in the header. Since I want the exact same information in my second company, Gabricam, I'll copy and paste the entire column. To make this comparison fair, I'll use copy and paste in both applications whenever possible. I'll quickly retype the header name in the pasted column Gabricam. To ensure the column is pulling from the correct GP company, I need to have a tree definition created, which we have not done yet. Once the tree has been created, we'll return to this column definition and edit the reporting unit so each column is pulling from the correct GP database or company. Our final column is the column that adds or consolidates both companies together. In the column type, I'll select Calculated Column, or CALC. In the formula field, I'll enter the formula C plus D, or Column C plus Column D. I'll enter the column header combined. I'll highlight all three headers and change the style to column header. I want to go ahead and define this as a year-to-date column, so I'll enter the text year-to-date as of with the end-of-date field. I'll also remove the underline since this is the first line of the column header. I'll format it as a column header and then I'll copy and paste it to the second column. The column format is completed, at least until we have a tree. Now let's format the columns in Jet Reports. When we created the rows, we set up the account numbers and the account description. We also have already set up the column structure for both companies and the combined column. Now we must create the functions to populate each column with the amounts from GP. Let's open the Jet ribbon by selecting Jet from the menu. 
Then I'll select the GL function. The GL function wizard window will open, so I just need to fill in the blanks. In the where, I'll select cell, which will populate every row with an account number with the result of this function. In the what field, I'll select balance. You'll notice that budget is also an option that I could use if I were creating a budget comparison report. I'll need to select or point to the account number that this amount will represent. I'll point to the column with the account number in it, using the F4 key to make the column absolute, or always column D. Just as we did in Management Reporter, we must define the periods that this amount represents. I do not want to manually edit each function every time the period changes, so I'll close this function for a moment. In this hidden column B, I'll enter the fiscal year and the fiscal period on which this report should be run. Note these are fiscal periods and years, not calendar years and months, although for most companies they are the same. Let's reopen that amount function window. In the start period field, I'll want to first reference the fiscal year. Using F4, as the fiscal year will always be in cell B7 on this report. Then I'll use the ampersand, which Excel recognizes as concatenate or join. And then I'll enter the string slash one in double quotes. Since this is a year-to-date report, we'll always view amounts starting with period one. You'll notice that the results display to the right, so I can be sure that I've entered the formula correctly. I'll copy the start period formula to the end date period and edit it removing the one, adding another ampersand, and then referencing the reporting fiscal period in cell B8, making it absolute by typing dollar sign B dollar sign eight. Reports in JET calculate faster when using fiscal periods, but I could have referenced the full date as well. In the report definition comparison video, I'll show you how to make selecting the reporting period much faster and easier for the end user. You'll also notice a value in the cell now, so let's refresh and see the results. As you can see, our amounts are showing as negatives. In the row definition comparison video, I showed how signs get reversed in the row formatted management reporter, but for jet reports, I'd show you with the column formatting. So let's do this now. Let's go back to design mode. With the focus on the cell with the GL function, we're going to edit the function in the Excel formula bar. We'll simply place a negative sign or a minus sign between the equal and GL, which is the start of the function. The amount will then be reversed, so let's copy this function to company B. In this combined column, I'll simply add a formula to add the two columns together. Let's refresh and see the results. Right now, both companies are pointed to the same company, so they match each other. When I look at the company selection in the JET setting, I can see the company Fabricam is selected. If I select the drop-down list, I can see my other company, Gabricam. Switching between companies is just a matter of selecting which company to use from the drop-down list. Let's go back to design mode. Since I want to use both companies on the same report, I'll edit the GL function I'll scroll down and populate the company field with the company name I wish to display in this column, Fabricam. Now I'll repeat my actions for the Gabricam column. After populating each column with the correct company, I can see that each column is displaying different dollar amounts. Let's refresh again, showing that each column is displaying different amounts from different company databases. All accounts are showing now, even ones with no balances. We'll exclude the rows with zero balances in the report definition comparison video for both JET reports and management reporter. Now that we've populated the sales numbers in JET reports, let's populate the amount sections for the cost of goods sold by using copy and paste. Since we want debit balances in our cost of goods sold to appear as positive number, we'll simply remove the minus sign in the function for each company. Finally, we'll copy the cost of goods sold amount and paste the functions into the expense section. Let's refresh the data. As you can see, the amounts for each account number are appearing, as are the subtotals. 
With the setup we've already done, we basically can see the consolidated report. We're dismissing headers in some special formatting. This concludes the column definition comparison. Next up is the tree definition comparison.